Hi everyone, welcome back to Dodge Japan Live with me, Jill. So, it took me a while to get here, but yes, I finally have in my hands my permanent residence visa in Japan. So in this video, I will be taking you through the journey that I took in order to get my permanent residence visa. And I will be sharing like the factors that went into the application, the entire process that I went through in order to finally get my visa and of course all of the documents that I submitted. So hopefully for those of you who are also thinking about applying for your permanent residence visa, hopefully this video will be useful for you and that you will be able to learn from my experience. <music> So first of all, I would just like to talk to you about my background and why I finally decided to apply for the permanent residence visa. Yes, rumors are that the notoriously strict Japanese Immigration Bureau are easing their regulations when it comes to granting permanent residence, but I would be lying if I said that everyone or anyone could just apply for permanent residence. In fact, I know a lot of people who have been living here longer than I have been and they're not even thinking about applying for permanent residence because they know that their chances of getting approved are just not that high. So in my case, the reason why I decided to apply for the permanent residence visa, to be honest, the biggest factor was because I have a son who is half Japanese. So considerations for spouses of Japanese nationals are already different from those who are here on a work visa to begin with and it's never really stated, not that I found, it's never really stated on like any official immigration bureau website or anything like that that having a child here would help but sources in the internet say that it, it's, it could be a big factor for getting approved and so I figured why not and I decided to go ahead and apply. Of course, if you don't have a child in Japan and you're not married to a Japanese national but you still think that you are qualified for permanent residence based on your own research, then please go ahead and do it. Let this not discourage you from applying for permanent residence. Again, I'm not an expert and I am not in any way affiliated with the Japanese Immigration Bureau, nor am I privy to their actual criteria for approval. I'm just sharing all of this information for the sake of transparency and to really take you guys through my thought process and my application process and to really give you a good picture of my standing, my status in Japan that has to do with the application for permanent residence. So aside from having a half Japanese son who was born here, other information about me that I think may have been pertinent to my application are First, I have been living in Japan for close to five years. I got my permanent residence visa in January of this year. And so in February of this year, I will be here for five years already. There's something wrong with that sentence grammatically, but you get it. So in February, 2022, I will be on my fifth year of living in Japan. And then my most recent desire to you card was for a period of three years. And another thing is that I have been married to my husband for more than five years. So we married before I came to Japan. Another thing is that by the time of my application, I was employed by a Japanese company as an ESL teacher. I started working like right after, maybe a couple of days, weeks after arriving in Japan. And technically, I was actually on my childcare leave from 2020 to 2021. But... I was still under my company's employment when I applied for permanent residence. And next one is I have an N2 GALPT, Japanese Language Proficiency Test Certification, which I got in 2018. Next is I have, of course, never engaged in any illegal activities during my stay in Japan and have a clean legal record. And lastly, I have always kept up with paying my taxes and am enrolled in Japan's national pension system. So now I want to talk about when I applied for permanent residence and how long it took to process. So I submitted my application in August 3, 2021. Actually, I was planning on getting my application started as early as June because according to my research on the internet, uh, the process could take like somewhere from four to eight months. And then my then visa was going to expire in February. So just to be sure, I wanted to start my process eight months before February, which was June of 2021. 
but then I had other things to do and honestly it also took us me and my husband it also took us longer than expected to gather all of the documents needed so I ended up actually sending the application we're actually going to the immigration bureau to submit the application on august 3 2021 and because of what i have learned from the internet and also because it is stated on their website that applications could take like four to six months i i was already planning on renewing my three year spouse visa by the end of january because and this is important even if you have already applied for permanent residence, if you haven't gotten your card yet and your current visa will expire, you need to renew it, even if you're in the process of getting a permanent residence. Luckily, however, the much-awaited hagaki or postcard from the Immigration Bureau essentially informing me that my permanent residence visa is ready arrived in January 6th, so just five months after I sent out my application. I actually suspect that it would have arrived earlier if there weren't any lacking documents when I initially applied. So yes, there were lacking documents when I went to the Immigration Bureau for the first time and I will share all of that to you later so to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. Now, where did I apply for permanent residence? To be honest, this is really not something that is under an applicant's control because where you submit your application for permanent residence depends on which regional immigration services bureau has jurisdiction over your place of residence. But I really just wanted to share about my experience in the Yokohama District Immigration Office located in Torehama Cho because I, I, I really appreciated it. I was used to renewing my visa out in the office in Tokyo, which was located in Shinagawa, and it is like starkly different. To be fair, I do understand that there are so many foreigners in Tokyo, and the reason why my experience was pleasant at the Immigration Bureau in Torihama Cho was mainly because they didn't have to cater to a lot of clients. When I went to submit my requirements, I actually ran into a problem because I renewed my passport um, in February or March of 2021. And then when I renewed it, I decided to take my husband's last name. And so the name on my passport now uses my husband's last name, but the name on my Zairyu card still had my maiden name. And so when I went to submit my requirements, they told me that that cannot cannot be and that I needed to have my Zairyu card changed first. But believe it or not, I was able to get my Zairyu card changed and submit my requirements on the very same day. And not only on the very same day, but in under an hour. That's how not busy they were and that's how attentive they were to the client. So it was, it was really a nice experience. In the Shinagawa office, a lot of people were there and some of them had to be standing because there just were no places to sit on. But in the Yokohama office, like you can <laughs> lie down even on the chairs because it's just, there's nobody there. And lastly, I just want to mention that their staff were really nice. I, I didn't really have a particularly bad experience when I went to the Shinagawa office, but the people at Torehama Cho like actually smiled at you. <gasps> Unbelievable. And you know, they, 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 there wasn't that sense of like urgency when they were dealing with the foreigners who went there. So yeah, I really appreciated my experience at the Torehama Cho office. And if you are within their jurisdiction, lucky you. Okay, now down to the nitty gritty. I am going to be sharing with you the complete list of documents that I submitted and also the complete timeline of my application. I will be talking about everything here, including the wrong documents that I submitted and the mistakes that I made because I wanted to emphasize them to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And also some of the requirements are Japanese documents that you need to print out and fill in and to hopefully help you. I have added links to those documents on the description. In the past, I also did a video on how to renew your spouse visa in Japan, where I go into the details of getting certain documents. A lot of the documents mentioned in that video are also needed for your permanent visa application. So if there are documents mentioned in this video that you're not sure how to get or where to get, 
try to check out that video as well because it might be informative for you as well. Okay, so let's start with August 3, 2021. On that morning, I went to the Yokohama District Immigration Office located in Torihamacho armed with the following documents. I had my latest die to you card. This was used by the staff only to confirm my identity and this should be returned to you after they look at it. And then I also had my filled in application for permanent residence. So that's Eiju Kyokwashin Se Sho. And then aside from the name, which I wrote exactly as how it appeared on my passport, the rest of the document I answered in Japanese. To be honest, I actually had my husband write them in Japanese. And that's, that's what I've always done when I did my renewal. I mean, I could try to write it myself, but it's an official document. And um, I wanted to make sure that all of the countries are right and that it's written neatly. And I, I don't think that's a problem if you have your spouse or you know somebody Japanese write it. Just make sure that you also confirm that the information there are correct. And then next, third one, I had my 40 by 30 mm passport picture. I just used one of those photo ID machines that you have in train stations or supermarkets and it cost me 800 yen. Completely forgetting the picture for my previous visa application, I was actually a bit alarmed because when it was printed out, the background was blue and I thought it should be white, but no, I. I guess blue is the common one in Japan. So don't be worried if the background of your printout is blue. Blue is okay. And then I also had the filled in guarantor form. So I had my guarantor, which is my spouse, answer this form in advance. And then I also had my passport. Just like your Zairu card, this should be returned to you on that same day. I also had my Jumin Kyo, which I got from the nearest ward office or Kyokusho. Warning, so the Jumin Yo, which I submitted on that day, contained only my name and that was actually the wrong document. Later, I will explain to you why it was the wrong document and also which is the, wrong, the right document. Additionally, I also had a copy of our family register that's Kosaki Tohon, and my certificate of employment. So my employer actually provided two, one in English and one in Japanese. I, I don't think both are necessary, and you probably only need the Japanese one, but I do remember that when I submitted my applications, I submitted both the English and the Japanese one. And then I also had a copy of my payslip, which was again provided by my employer, and also I had my Noze Shomensho for the last three years. And they are certifications which say that you have been paying your taxes to your city. And you get this from the board office or from the city hall of the city where you are living on those three years, okay? <laughs> that sounds confusing, but um, not, let me um, explain to you my situation at the time, okay? So we actually moved to Yokohama in 2020, November 2020. Before that, we lived in Otaku in Tokyo. So since I applied in 2021, I needed my Noze Shomen Show for the last three years. And so that would mean um, 2020, 2019, and 2018. And during those three years, I was living in Otaku in Tokyo. So that means that even though I am now living in Yokohama, I had to head back to Otaku to get my Noze Shomensho. And that's exactly what I did. And another set of requirements are your Kaze Shomensho, which are your actual tax certificates. Just like the Noze Shomensho, I got these from the city where I used to live. Of course, I also had to get the same tax papers for my husband, the Kaze Shomen Show and the Noze Shomen Show. I also submitted my husband's employment certificate and a copy of his payslip and I believe some financial documents, um, bank statements, just to show that uh, in case I like don't have employment, he can guarantee for me because he is my guarantor after all. I had to submit a letter of intent detailing why I intend to be a permanent resident and why I deserve to be a permanent resident. And this one, I had two versions of it actually. Well, it was the same content, but I had one that was typewritten, that was printed. 
and then I also had one that I wrote by hand. I tried to submit both and then the person at the counter told me to just choose one and I was like which which one would be better and he said it's it's up to you whichever is fine. So at the end of the day I decided to submit the handwritten one. And as for the content I just like stated that I have been living in Japan for this long and that I'm married to a Japanese man. I have a half Japanese son and that I have always been a dedicated worker during the time I've been living in Japan. I have paid my taxes, have never engaged in any legal activities, and all that. And the next, I had a photocopy of both sides of my health insurance card. That's um, Ken Kohoken. And then I also had ready a photocopy of my JLPT N2 certification, which I got in 2018. And lastly, I had this um, printout of my monthly pension records which was obtained from Nankin Net. I'm linking that in the description. This was a nine page long document and the registration process on the website can take up to five days. So this honestly was something that I let, I asked my husband to take care of and um, he, he handled this part of the requirements because aside from knowing that I have a little blue book in my position which is somehow related to my pension, I really knew nothing about it. And so I, I believe the registration would require some information that you can find in your pension book. So if, if your spouse is not so busy or um, you know there's someone there's someone Japanese who can help you or you know maybe your Japanese is so much better than mine so that it's not a problem with you but yeah in my case I had my husband take care of these documents and he got it from Nenkin Net. So what exactly happened at the Immigration Bureau on my August 3 trip? The documents that I brought with me on August 3 were actually not complete. I honestly expected that the staff would just return the documents to me and tell me to come back some other time when they're complete. Much to my relief though, they decided to accept the application. Instead, they gave me an envelope which was pre-addressed so it, it already had stamped on it the address of the person concerned at the immigration bureau who is handling my application so i was supposed to use that envelope to just send my lacking document so right there and then they accepted my application i didn't need to go back even if my documents are lacking i just needed to send the lacking documents over by mail in addition they also gave me this piece of paper which lists down exactly what documents I lacked. This for me was very crucial because I did not need to worry about probably ending up with the wrong documents again because I don't know the name, I don't know the proper name and all that. I just showed that paper to to whoever is in charge and they knew exactly what it was even if I didn't know what it was and, and that's it. And one thing you should note if this also happens to you, although you are allowed to send the lacking documents on a later date, there is a deadline and that deadline in my case was three weeks after i submitted my application and then in addition to the envelope and the list of the requirements that i still needed they also gave me this um, rectangular piece of paper a small piece of paper and it contained my application number and the phone number which i can call if i had any questions so then what documents were lacking first was um a lot of tax related certificates for both me and my husband. I, I believe like it depends on each per person's situation and personnel at the tax office would really be the best people to guide you in, in this process of identifying which ones you need. But just from what I understood, and again, I'm not an expert, the list included like tax certificates related to withholding tax, special income tax for reconstruction, self-declared income tax, consumption tax, um, local consumption tax, inheritance tax, and donation tax. And so yeah, uh, th there was a lot of them. And in addition to that, I my husband also needed to get a document related to his pension. So it was called Hiho Kenja Kiroku Shokai Kaito Hyo. And it, it translates to like, insured record inquiry answer sheet and yeah so both of these documents were pretty 
technical and I really can't explain clearly what they were. I, I would not want to attempt to, to be honest. But then again, I didn't really need to understand and worry about the technicalities because I just used the paper that they gave me in order to get what I needed. So from the Immigration Bureau, I headed straight to the City Hall in order to get the tax-related certificates because, um, I don't know, I could have done it another day, but I just my OCD got a hold of me and even though I was very tired already that day and I was like, I, I had my son with me, I decided to go straight to the city hall only to be told that the tax documents were not released by the city hall. So they were released by the tax office. So that's something that you should take note of you need those withholding tax certificates and stuff and they're not from the city hall they're from the tax office i the tax office i guess also depends on the area where li where you live and it, it can get very confusing so i actually asked the staff from the city hall to tell me exactly where the 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 tax office was i had them i asked them to search for it using my phone on google maps so i i will not get lost and i i can make sure that i end up at the correct office and so at the tax office i showed the paper which indicated what i needed and then they had me fill in a short and simple form nothing to worry about and then i got the necessary documents in less than 30 minutes so it was it was a pretty quick um, trip. As for my husband's um, pension related documents, he was luckily available on that afternoon so he also got those from the nearest pension office. August 4, 2021. So using the pre-address envelope given to me by the Immigration Bureau, I went to the post office nearest to me and mailed the documents I lacked. So I was I was pretty paranoid about messing up my application if you know if those documents don't eat, end up with the right person at the immigration bureau or you know something happens with them so i i made sure to send it via registered mail um in Ch japanese that's called kakidome so if you end up in the same situation and you're also anxious about anything going wrong with your mail just ask for kakidome at the post office september 6 2021 so just when I thought that everything's okay now, I got a letter from the Immigration Bureau saying that my documents are still lacking. And again, this time they gave me a list detailing which documents I lacked, and they also sent with the letter uh, a pre-addressed envelope. So this time the documents which I lacked were me and my husband's Noze Shomesho and Kaze Shomesho for the year 2021. So here's what happened. as I said I initially already submitted um, my Kaze Shomen Sho and Oze Shomen Sho for the last three years, which I got all the way from Tokyo. Since I started obtaining my requirements in May of 2021. So I got those tax papers in May of 2021 because, as I said, I was planning to get my application started in June. And in May 2021, the tax papers for the year 2021 were not available yet especially since we also moved residences, I guess. So at that time, I only had a 2018, 2019, and 2020, and that was okay. But then I ended up actually submitting my application in August, and we were already past the first half of the year, which means that my 2021 tax papers are now ready in the current city I live in, which is Yokohama. Another document which I lacked was our household Jiminyo. As you may recall, I actually submitted a Jiminyo when I went to the Immigration Bureau on August 3, but that was the wrong document. And here's what you should know in order not to make the same mistake that I did. So there are two kinds of Jiminyo. Um, one is called like uh, Setai Zen In, and that means like all members of the household and setai ichibu, which means like just, just one part of the household or one person. And what you need when you apply for permanent residence is the setai zen in. So when you go to the board office, you'll be asked to fill in a form. And in that form, there's like a, there are like check boxes and you need to check, you need to indicate which one of the two you need. And so apparently the first time I asked for a Jiminyo, I indicated um, 
said that Ichibu, and I, I just didn't notice it because I, I didn't really know that there were actually two kinds at the time. So yeah, make sure to get the Setai Zenin Jiminkyo. So then both of those two lacking documents I could get from the ward office. September 7, 2021. Coincidentally, um, Yuma and I were actually scheduled to go to the ward office on this day because it was the schedule for his one year and six months medical exam which is sponsored by the city. I decided to go there about two hours before our scheduled medical checkup and I was able to get all of the documents that I needed even with time to spare. September 8, 2021. Again, opting for pre-registered mail, I enclosed the requirements in the envelope provided and sent it out. By this point, you might think that I'd be a little annoyed by the Immigration Bureau because they had me. This is the second time that I had to like send documents out. When I checked out reviews about the Immigration Bureau in Torihama Cho, this was actually one of the things that people complained about. They would say that uh, the the staff there are not so strict or not so busy, but they keep you like sending documents a lot of times. Honestly, though, I, I didn't mind it. I, I actually preferred it because what's the alternative, right? Would, would I rather like go there physically every time just to be told that the documents that I have are not correct? No, I, I actually preferred it this way. I felt less pressure and less stressed through this process. January 6, 2022. So that morning it was actually snowing and I decided to take a short walk with Yuma outside because I wanted him to enjoy his first snowfall. It was his first snowfall. And as we were heading back home, I suddenly felt the urge to like check our mailbox. And when I opened it, ta-da, there it was. It was the only content of our mailbox, which usually is actually always full because I very seldom check it. And I saw the Hagaki for the Immigration Bureau telling me that my permanent resident Zairyu card can now be claimed. January 7, 2022. Despite snow still blanketing the streets, I headed out early to the immigration office. As you can imagine, I was pretty excited. And so I was armed with my passport, my Zairyu card, and the Hagaki I received. And I arrived there just a few minutes after they started business for the day. Before heading up to the second floor, I dropped by the convenience store on the first floor in order to get the hagaki, uh, no, not the hagaki, in order to get the revenue stamp or the payment for the permanent residence visa. The permanent, permanent residence visa would cost you 8,000 yen. I just went straight to the cashier and stated the amount. And instead of receiving one 8,000 yen like revenue stamp, I actually got two. 4,000 yen revenue stamps and I was pretty surprised when I saw that but apparently that's that's how it is so don't be surprised if that happens to you as well. On the second floor I lined up at the claiming window at that point there was no need for a priority number and I, I was third in line so there really were not many people. The personnel at the window asked for my Zairyu card, my passport, the revenue stamp and also my Hagaki. And then he also gave me this document to fill in and to sign. And on that document, he also asked me to paste the revenue stamp. He also asked me to take off my mask for a while so that he can confirm my identity. And then once that's done, he gave me a priority number and asked me to wait. Again, the wait was not long. My priority number, I still remember, was 11. And by the time I sat down to wait, it was already like number six. So I, there were only five people in line waiting. And when my number was called, I headed to the counter. And then so they showed me the card and first asked me to check if the details were correct. And I confirmed that the details were correct. They handed it to me and that was my residence card. They also gave me my old residence card with a hole punched on it and they also returned my passport. And that's it. I finally had in my hand my permanent residence visa. I hope the account of my experience will be able to help you in your own application. Thank you so much for watching this video. Good luck on getting your permanent residence visa. And if you like this video, do give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel for more useful videos.